Dear CG Thinker, welcome. Welcome in this new daily video about Blender Fluent and the Art of Fast Modeling. And today I want to share with you something what I love the most in Blender. My favorite workflow in Blender. I think you start to, to know me. I love to be able to edit what I want when I want. And today we will make this result. But the great satisfaction with this model is, of course, it's a non-destructive model, so you can change everything uh, you want. You can uh, move it, for example. You can change everything because it's a fluent model, so it's completely non-destructive and editable when you want. But, 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 the great thing, and that is what we will do today, it's the shading. This result is a procedural shading, so it's a non-geometry dependent result. The best thing to understand is check what I will have if I make, for example, a slice. I add a slice here uh, with a mirror like this, and now I will re-display the render result. And this is the result. As you can see, the edge wear continue to follow my model. I didn't make any UV um, and I can continue to add detail, change the shading, re-add the detail and all the power is the ability to see this shader to follow your mesh. So how you can do this result? And we will remake this simple shading. The start is the principal shader. I have my base color and of course the result is the same everywhere. The first thing is to make a mask, okay? A mask to separate edges and the rest of the mesh. For that, I will use uh, an ambient occlusion. An ambient occlusion with inside, okay? So check inside. So I use a map range. The map range allows me to adjust uh, the brightness and the contrast of the result. So this is the base of the mask. If I use it with a mix like this, I will be able to mix two colors. Okay, the base color and another color for my edges. So we are agree this is poor about detail. So I will add some variation with a mus grave texture. One more time, I use a map range to adjust brightness and contrast of the Musgrave result and I mix this one and this one with a multiply operation, okay? This is a math node. And now I have more interesting results. And this is what I will use to mix my two colors and get this map color. And of course, if I connect it in my base color of the principal shader, I have this result. Okay, now we need to manage another thing, not only the color map. To make a PBR uh, shader, you need to manage the color map, the metallic map, and in this case, uh, the roughness map. We will don't make normal, it's a very quick video to explain to you the basics, but you can manage the normal. For the metallic, I will reuse the result of the mask, so this one, with a map range. This map range um, gives a result between 0 to 1. And I connect it to metallic. This is the new result. And the last thing is the roughness. In this case, uh, I want 0 0.4 for the gray part and 0 0.1 for the metallic part and I connect it to roughness. And this is the basic result for this setting. Okay, the, last, uh, the next step is to add a variation in cavity of the mesh. For that, I will reuse an ambient occlusion, but this time I will don't check inside. After that, I use an RGB curl um, instead of the map range. Why? Just because in this case, I want to be able to, to set a, uh, a, custom, a custom color ramp 
okay, custom profile for my gradient. One more time, I will mix this mask with the Musgrave variation that I already use with the edge mask. One more time, it's a multiply operation. And just before the multiply operation, I make an addition with the map variation with the Musgrave. Check the result if I mute this node. Uh, I have a completely black part and I don't want completely black part. So I do just an addition, give more, uh, more fine detail. This new map is used to mix this previous color map with a darker uh, color and get these results. This is the result after the addition of the cavity before and after. And this is what I use in the base color. And this is my result. The last step for this quick overview is how to add some color variation. I will use a Musgrave texture one more time uh, with a U saturation value. Uh, I pick, just copy paste this color here and change the value to 0 0.8. And as you can see, I have now color variation for the model. And I will use this result instead of the flat color. So my new color map is that. Okay. I will add roughness variation. I use the same Musgrave texture. I set my uh, variation between the 0 0.4 and 0 0.5. So this map become this map and I will use it instead of the flat value 0 0.4 that I use for the roughness of the gray part. I place it here and I have now my final result. Uh, for the roughness variation you can see it if you go here you can see here the variation of the roughness. And all the power of this shading is, as I already said, it's completely procedural, so it's non-geometry uh, dependent. So you can add what you want on your mesh. Just back to the render view. And one more time, the result follow. You can add detail uh, when you want and don't, oh no, I will remake the UV, I will re-export or anything else. Just continue to work and add what you want, when you want. It's just the most satisfaction way to work in, um, in Blender. Really, I, I really love that. So I know some of you will ask, ah, oh, really, what about baking, etc. But the video is um, is a quick video, okay? It's a daily format. So obviously we will speak about baking in another video, but it's just a quick introduction about procedural modeling uh, in Blender and the pleasure that you can have to work like that. I hope you like this video. I see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Roll together.